welcome everybody, listeners, to our St Finn Bars podcast. And we have a very special guest today. And welcome, please welcome Iggy from Year 5. Thank you very much. Now, Iggy, I believe you've had a very exciting adventure this year and which started out in Scotland. Can you tell us a bit about how you ended up in Scotland? Uh, Yes, so the first time, the first thing that I ended up in Scotland was Miniboss. Miniboss is um, an online business school for kids that want to learn how to make a business. And I got into the World Cup startups, so I flew to Scotland and it started. So with the Startup World Cup, you would have to go to Sage and Scythe. Scythe is for not online businesses, so like the ones that you'd sell like in the store, and Sage is online businesses, which I was in. And you would present in a room with some judges, and a day later you would be into the Super Finals, and they will pronounce the people that got nominated for the Super Finals, and I was one of them. So in the Super Finals, before I did it, I practised my speech and put some humour into it, and then it was our go. I um, wasn't very nervous because I've mini boss got me into a lot of public speaking, which I was more confident about, and I pretty much did some humour and walking around and telling them about our business. There was 42 judge, 35 judges, I mean, and... Fantastic. And were you working by yourself or in a team? Uh, me and Toby. So I was in a team, a really little team. It was me and my friend Toby. We run a business called Scambusters. Our website is scambusters.store, S-T-O-R-E. And if you want to have a look, you can. Fantastic. Tell us about the, the boss challenge. What did you have to create? So you... You need to create your own business. I chose to help kids not get scammed on online games. My main game was Roblox and I picked a game called Pet Simulator X which there is a lot of scamming in it and I've launched my first masterclass about it. It's for $10 on my website. Fantastic. What advice would you have for some of our listeners who might be wanting to play that game about scamming? What could they look out for? Well, first, you never want to trust anyone, which you you can trust your friends that you know in real life, but that's it because a lot of people online tend to be scammers a lot. Okay, and what sort of things should they be looking out for? Um, if they trade you, don't accept it because they're most likely to take your valuables to trick you into it. Fantastic. And tell us, I know a lot of the listeners would be interested if they wanted to get involved in something like this. How did you first get involved in the Mini Boss Challenge? Um, so once I was um, ordering canteen and I saw a, um, a ad on the Flexi School called Mini Boss and I told my mum that I was interested in it. And I had my first course with the owner of Mini Boss for Australia and you get into some Sunday classes and for like an hour and 30 minutes they'll teach you about business and all of that, how to create your business and make an idea. What a fantastic thing to get involved in. What sort of things, skills has it helped you with and what confidence do you think it has given you, Iggy? It has gave me a lot of public speaking. I recommend Minipos for a lot of public speaking and giving you more creative ideas, like... I it took me about five months to think of the idea, so you you, you wouldn't want to like think of your idea slowly because you have a lot of time. And how often do you have the lessons or classes or catch up with Toby? Uh, so every Friday I'm with my coach at Kate, and me and Toby um, write some scripts for our videos and all of that. And on Sunday every week we do a catch up with Kate and these other business people. Not adults, like kids that have been through mini boss. It's a public class. What a fantastic opportunity. Now, you were in Scotland. What else did you do in Scotland? What were some of the highlights? So in Scotland, mini boss prepared us a, um, a tour of Scotland. I was really impressed about the church. That was the first biggest church I've ever saw. It was a thousand-year-old one. 
we looked at it, it was really, they had to renovate it because it was almost collapsing. Wow. And we had lunch with Toby and all of that and we had a fun time. It must have been strange. You only met Tony Toby for the first time when you were over there? Uh, no, but I've, seen, I've met him in Sydney. Oh, you had met him in Sydney yeah. before as well. Okay, after Scotland, where to from Scotland? We went to Amsterdam, the Netherlands and Europe, and I was pretty surprised how many bikes there were. There was about – there's more bikes than people, so I was a bit shocked. Um, in Scotland, though, I did have the best cheese. If you're going to Amsterdam, sorry, I recommend you try the cheese there. It's very nice. Do you know what type of cheese it's called? Uh, the cheese company. Okay. Um, the cheese num- the cheese company is called Henry Willing, and it's this family that made a cheese business on a farm. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. We'll have to keep our eye out for that one. And I believe Rome was on your schedule as well? Oh, yes, Rome. I have a lot to t- tell you about that. First in Rome, we, we arrived pretty late, so we had dinner, and then we went into our uh, hotel and slept because we were very tired from the flight um then we went to the vatican it's the biggest church i was very impressed with it like the ceilings were amazing and everything brilliant okay where to after rome um after rome we went to lebanon where my family's from that and we first we went to the um Telefreak, which is a... Do you know those things in the snow where they bring you up by a wired box? Um, I went up there to the mountain called Lady, the Lady of Lebanon, which is Mary, and we saw, like, a big statue of Mary and we and there's, like, a staircase and you could go up it. And my mum's... We went to my mum's village. It's a one-and-a-half-hour drive. It's in the mountains. It's, like, a 1,000 metres high, so it's really high up. Um, we we stayed there for like a night at my mum's village, and we saw my mum. My mum used to live in this house. It's like three hundred years old now. It's really cool, and I stayed a night there too. We made some traditional Lebanese food, and we lit fireworks on the street. So it was really fun in the village. What a fantastic experience! Now I also believe there was a bit of conflict over there, which was a bit of a worry. Yes, yeah, so in my dad's village we couldn't really go because it was a bit of bombing and stuff because every, say, year they they kind of stir up the army and, yeah. Okay, we don't realise how lucky we are here in Australia to have a peaceful environment. Very different from Byron Bay, I guess, all your travels. Very different. In Lebanon, the rocket launcher holes in the buildings from the war. Wow. Now, Dubai was one of your final stops. I'm very interested because previously when you and I spoke, you spoke about that special restaurant. Was it called Nobu? Nobu. Nobu. um, Tell us all about Nobu. Yeah, so Nobu is a three Michelin star restaurant that was very nice. It's a Japanese and French fusion restaurant. And I had, we had really good sushi and we saw the beach of Dubai and everything. And me and my dad, um, we looked outside and had a photo outside, which would be in my presentation. Also, we in the actual hotel, it was amazing. It's called Atlantis in the Palm, if you want to look it up. It's amazing. The hotel lobbies are amazing. It's like you can go dolphin swimming and all other activities. Fantastic, Iggy. You've really inspired me to find out some more and do a bit of research on my own but we really appreciate you sharing your experiences with us and we'd love to have you back on our program another time thanks Iggy